If you're looking for wheat, barley, canola, or corn seed this spring, go to HaneyFarms.com. We're joined right now on RailerCulture.com by Daryl Pryle. He is with Case IH, and he is the tra- Tractor Product Specialist. Welcome this morning, Daryl. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Sean. Daryl, you guys had some big news that came out, uh, I guess, recently. Uh, you've uh, shipped some uh, Tier 4 uh, solution engines uh, to the marketplace. What are uh, Tier 4 regulations? Uh, tier 4 basically is uh, a, a tighter restrictions on the emissions that can be exhausted out of a um, diesel engine. Uh, going from Tier 3 to Tier 4, uh, the main constraints were a reduction in particular matter and a reduction in nitrous oxide. Okay. So, uh, how many, uh, you know, these, these new tractors have come to the marketplace. Uh, are, is Case IH currently the only manufacturer that has uh, engines to meet these new standards? Uh, no, Case IH, well, I guess as far as what's delivered to the market um, right now, um, Case IH was the first to deliver a Tier 4A compliant tractor. And uh, there are others that are in, in the works. Uh, John Deere and Agro um, all have, um, all have uh, products coming to the market here shortly. So I, I guess one of the things that I think farmers right away when they hear like emission standards, they, they think uh, possible changes to fuel mileage or horsepower. Is there any changes to something like fuel mileage with these new engines? Uh, fuel economy, uh, maybe more to the point, uh, definitely. Um, the Tier 4 uh, system that we've chosen to go, on, go with is, um, is a system called SCR, or Selective Catalytic Reduction. And what that allows us to do is uh, remove all of the emission controls from the engine. From, uh, from what we had known on a Tier 3, all of those emission controls have been removed. And, um, and, and in turn, what we're now doing is, is treating the exhaust uh, as it leaves the engine on route to the exhaust tip. Okay. So I guess does that provide uh, better fuel economy then? Uh, for sure. Um, basically, the exhaust controls that we had on Tier 3 involved about 10% recirculation of exhaust gases back through the combustion chamber. And uh, in Tier 4, uh, Tier 4A specifically, um, that's increased up to 30% or more. So um, with the route that we've gone, by removing all of that emission controls from the engine, we're now breathing clean air, uh, taking clean air and, and uh, compressing it, uh, and then uh, introducing that to the combustion chamber, giving you a much more efficient uh, uh, combustion out of, the, out of the engine. Okay. What, what, about, ho- what about horsepower, power, Daryl? Yeah, maybe I should expand that. Uh, so, so what that does for us is it gives us a better fuel economy out of the tractor. Um, we're expecting in the neighborhood of uh, between 10 and, and uh, 20 percent uh, fuel economy gains, depending on the engine that we're comparing it to and the tractor horsepower model that we're uh, that we have that engine in. Um, as far as the horsepower is concerned, uh, we're able to push um, our horsepower limits higher with the same uh, cubic inch or cubic liter displacement of the engines. Okay. Are there any disadvantages to moving to this new technology? Uh, the main disadvantage, I guess, um, would be uh, basically the, the need to handle an additional liquid. And that additional liquid is known as DEF, or diesel exhaust fluid. And that diesel exhaust fluid is a, a solution of uh, approximately 67% water, which is deionized water, and uh, 33% uh, urea. Um, and the urea that's used in the solution is a uh, urea formulation that that contains no formaldehyde <clears throat> sorry no formaldehyde and together yeah so together they make a water based solution and um which can freeze uh, and will freeze uh, so then we have to put in place uh, different features on the tractor to prevent uh damage due to freeze freeze out Okay, so obviously a lot of farmers use their tractors in the winter time to do things like push snow, or uh, that'd be probably the most common usage. Uh, how does that fit with you know something that a solution that'll freeze? Yeah, we we don't see it being a real real problem. The tractors are built to accommodate it. Uh, the SCR technology is used today in on the road trucks. Uh, there, it's becoming more popular in heavy duty uh, pickup trucks such as an F three fifty, F four fifty, etc. And Dodge, Chrysler, uh, Ford, um, 
uh, vehicles. So it is it is the, uh, the tier four solution that's being more widely accepted than than the alternative. In, in tractor usage, it, it's not just farmers using it in the wintertime. It's also um, oil field maintenance, um, snow removal, and uh, and road maintenance. So the um, the tractors are built in a way that uh, the solution can be, uh, stay frozen for up to 30 minutes. Um, so when you first start the tractor and put it to work, the um, inside of the tank that holds the def, the diesel exhaust fluid, there is a heat exchange unit. The heat exchange unit um, has circulated engine coolant through it. So for the first 30 minutes, um, that engine coolant is uh, being warmed by the engine operation, being circulated through the heat exchange unit and turning that, which is a, um, a slush or a frozen death product into a liquid. And uh, for the first 30 minutes, it's allowed to run at 100% performance without any uh, DEF being injected into the exhaust stream. So... Uh, with all these, I guess with new technology also comes usually a bump up in, in cost. Is there any, can you give us any sort of indication what these new T4 engines, what kind of price increase farmers are going to are gonna see? Yeah, you'll, you, I think, Sean, what you're going to see is uh, uh, there'll be two, two price increases. One is a uh, pretty much a standard increase from uh, model year over model year. And usually that ranges uh, traditionally anywhere between uh, two and five percent, depending on um, the price of iron overhead, etc. Uh, the other part of the cost will be uh, the introduction of these other components into the into the tractor. Um, the trade-off to the to the cost of putting these components onto the tractor would be, uh, for example, uh, the cost of DEF solution itself. Um, for every unit of DEF solution you you would inject into the exhaust stream, you save two units of diesel fuel. So, for example, one unit uh, being a, one gallon of DEF, you would save two gallons of diesel fuel. Uh, cost comparison: the cost of diesel varies all across the country, and so so does DEF. So, um, uh, basically, I'll just make a reference to um, um, and 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 the cost of DEF will vary depending on the the volumes that you're going to be handling. And purchasing from your supplier. Uh, right now, uh, probably the average price would be around a dollar forty a liter for a DEF. Uh, in comparison to diesel fuel, is anywhere between eighty-seven and, and ninety-five cents a liter for diesel fuel, farm fuel. Okay, so is the is the DEF you mix it into the de the actual diesel fuel itself? No, there's two separate containers uh, that hold. So you've got your standard uh, fuel tank, which holds your diesel on the tractor, and you have a second tank that holds your DEF. And uh, that second tank is made of high-density polyethylene plastic. Uh, and it's uh, built with that uh, product uh, for the main reason it has to have some uh, some um, expansion characteristics. So that tank will freely expand up to 7% with, without any damage being caused by the freezing action of the DEF in the tank. So is there a ratio of uh, diesel fuel burn to how much DEF you need? Uh, there is. Uh, good question. Uh, basically, the injection ratio over the fuel usage is anywhere between two and seven percent. Are kind of the two extremes. Uh, that will will be varied depending on your um, the amount of horsepower you're pulling out of the engine. Obviously, the lower the horsepower being used, the lower the def consumption. The higher the horsepower usage, the higher the def consumption. Another variable is uh, your uh, humidity. Uh, the ambient humidity around the tractor will make a difference. Higher humidity conditions require higher DEF to uh, to neutralize the nitrous oxide being emitted. So uh, that's really the two main variables. So the third variable, which um, you know is the quality of the DEF, uh, the DEF solution will degrade over time, uh, depending on its uh, how it is stored. If you store it at 86 degrees Fahrenheit or approximately um, you know 23, 24 degrees centigrade, um, the shelf life of the product. Is is approximately um, um, uh, sorry. I got to <laughs> have to back up here a minute. The uh, at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about uh, 17 degrees Celsius, uh, you have a shelf life of three years on the product. At 86 degrees, you have a shelf life of approximately one year. And then when you get up in temperatures higher than that, uh, it, it can degrade quicker than that. So if uh, the quality of death is uh, reduced. Uh, you'll be just injecting more of it. Right. So do you have to buy the DEF at uh, Case IH dealers, or is there aftermarket DEF, or how, how does that process work? 
Yeah, you don't have to, Sean, but um, we're trying to make it convenient for our customers so that all of our all of our KCH dealerships will carry DEF through the parts department. Uh, the DEF will be carried in different sized capacity containers, two and a half gallons. Uh, U.S. gallons is the smallest container. We have a 55 gallon U.S. sorry U.S. gallon container, which is a 45 gallon drum in our world. Um, and then there's also a 270 U.S. gallons and 330 U.S. gallons uh, totes which are available. And if a customer is set up to handle a bulk, uh, much like they would use bulk fuel, um, that uh, will be able to be um, purchased in bulk form. So, Daryl, did, you did you have a lot of these new uh, engines out in the field last year uh, as prototypes for people to, to try and use and get feedback? And I guess, if, if so, what was the feedback? Yeah, it's, so far it's been pretty impressive. The, um, the, the prototype tractors that, have, that were produced uh, for for these in the fall of 2009 and spring 2010 have been in the hands of um, uh, test cooperator customers and they've been very impressed with the power and fuel consumption that these tractors are seeing. The um, the test units that we've had out um, have been mainly distributed through the, um, the three I states, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, um, mainly because of the heavy fall tillage that they do. Um, and uh, we have done some testing outside of that region in spring, uh, spring seeding, spring planting applications. So uh, we've had very, very good success with them. Um, we've also had uh, a few tractors that have been traveling around the marketing circuit for different trade shows. Uh, those have, have, have seen very little hours on them, but the, uh, the test tractors have, have uh, really produced pretty well for us. So. Okay. Okay, Daryl. Well, you know what? Uh, good luck with uh, this new product. It sounds... Uh... Uh, very innovative, and uh, wish you all the best luck in the future, and ho hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. Anyone with, uh, with uh, questions on this uh, technology, be sure to come see your KCH dealer. We'll do, our, we'll do our best to try and answer those questions. Thanks again, John.